Hello. Okay. Hello, everyone. evening please if you come on you can go ahead and share I hope you're doing well We bless the Lord for his faithfulness. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. Um, Kwame. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> um, you can definitely share, please, when you come on. You can definitely share. Praise thy name. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you so much. I really appreciate your encouragement. I hope you can hear me. The music is not so loud. Is the music okay? Can somebody let me know if the sound is okay? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start. Um, I bless God for each and every one of you. I thank God for each and every one of you. I'm so thankful for, I, I thank for, thank you so much, Esther. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you so much. I thank God for each and every one of you. It's always an honor and a privilege to come to you. Um, and I'm just thankful that the word is even blessing you, that God is using me to be a blessing to you. Um, mostly when I come on here, I just want to encourage you in your walk with Christ, not to give up. Um, and I am a testimony that if I can serve God in a manner whereby I can even come here and share something with you, then anybody can, anybody can, because I know what it's like to be you know swayed by the, the 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 things of this life the the wants of the world and overcome it to know what what it means to really find fulfillment in god amen and by the help of the holy spirit i believe that i'm at that place i'm not perfect perfect no i don't think anybody is but i can say that i'm at that place where i am um i'm, I'm better than i was before and it's totally by by depending on the word of God, taking the word of God as my anchor and, and, and by the help of the Holy Spirit as well, coming, developing a relationship with the Lord, knowing the Lord, and it's, it's changed my life, you know. I'm much happier. I'm less likely to be angry. Um, um, I'm more patient, um, you know, and uh, I believe that many that are around me can testify to this fact. 
and also for the fact that I'm even here to share a word with you. Um, most of you I receive testimonies and and things from of how much the Lord has, you know, the, the messages that uh, my husband and I have been preaching, how much it's been a blessing to you. And so my whole point is not to come on here and sound like, you know, I'm, I'm a great preacher or anything like that. But then what you should take away from this is that the Lord is in, in the business of transforming the lives of the people that are um, are willing to accept him, accept him and obey him. And that is the only reason why I'm here. That when, you, when you're done listening to me, then you feel like, wow, I've had an encounter with God. God is using this woman to talk to me. God is using her to, to, show, to, to give me a leeway to draw closer to him. That is my sole purpose. I don't have any other purpose of doing these videos, except that at the end, you will leave knowing that the Lord has spoken to you that you've been encouraged, that if God can uh, change a person like me, then he can do the same with you. He can make you better. And some of you, you don't need change. Some of you, you are perfect the way you are, but you need to be content within yourself. You need to find solace. You need to be at peace. And he is the, Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. This world can never give you peace. That's something that I've come to realize mingling in the world, mingling, giving yourself to the world, um, making $500,000, making $1 million, it will never give you peace. If money can give you peace, there's no way Michael Jackson will go and, and take Pupo for before he can sleep. Because he can't sleep. He doesn't have peace. A job cannot give you peace. It is only the Prince of Peace that can give you peace. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm already preaching and I haven't even prayed yet. So I'm going to go ahead and say a quick prayer and commence this thing to the hands of the living God that we will all be blessed, not just you. And most of the time when I'm speaking, the Lord reveal new things and I'm blessed by what I've shared. Me, myself, I go back and I watch the videos and and as, as it's very crucial for me because I'm watching myself. I don't like and I, I, I see all the mistakes I've made in, in, the, in the words. Sometimes I quote the biblical scriptures wrong. And, but I watch it so that I can learn from it because the Lord uses this to also teach me things, to make me grow. And especially with this topic. So, Father Lord, I thank you. Please bow your head with me as I say a prayer. Father Lord, I thank you. I bless your name. I worship you. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of all the glory and all of the honor. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Even as now, I feel your presence. I feel your power. I know that you are with me and I thank you. Spirit of the living God, I ask for... A clarity of thought, precision of speech. I pray for fresh oil. Use me. Do not let me sit here and speak of my own wisdom, but let it be of the demonstration of the spirit and power. Let people leave after listening to me be transformed. Be, let their heart be eager to want to know you more. Let them be drawn to you more after they have finished listening to me. I avail myself to be used by you, Holy Spirit. I pray that you will take absolute control of my mind. Take absolute control of my thought, of my speech as you were with the apostles in the time of acts i pray that you will do the same with me i avail myself to be to be used by you tonight i pray that every word that will come out will come from you lord and that it will fall on the heart of flesh i turn every heart of flesh into a heart of stone in the name of jesus let your people live here blessed let them live here oh god let them sign off adding onto their faith knowledge oh god in the name of jesus i pray that you reveal yourself to others even as they are listening to me if there's anybody that is sick as they are listening to your word for your bible says that you send your word and you healed our diseases even as they are listening i pray in the name of jesus that your power will manifest in your life and they will receive healing oh god and in the end glory and honor will be unto you i thank you lord i bless your name i thank you for your presence and your power that is availed to me right now i thank you for it i bless your name i thank you lord i bless your name in jesus name and let all the sins say amen let all the sins say amen please if you want to go on if you want to share go ahead and share the word that i have to share today is very very powerful it will be a blessing unto you i even learned 
myself as i was listening to this word i learned something myself and um, i want to talk about the truth will set you free the truth that will set you free is the word of god i don't have any other thing to sell you but the word of god if you've watched my videos from day one you realize that every time i put emphasis on the importance of the word of god and most of the time the power and the presence is made manifested and some of you you after you're done watching you test me you you send me messages about how much you are crying you can't do because there is power in the word i am not able to lay my hands on anybody to touch them to command demons to flee but as some of most of you as you are listening to the word you feel the need to cry you feel the presence and the power of god some of you want me to pray for you to pray that you'll get healed and that is the reason because there is power in the word because you can't see me i'm not even uh, you can see me through an audio but i'm not where you are but you can feel the power and the presence and that is the word of god the word of god carries power the word of god is sharper than any two i just it's live and active and that is what i have to give to you the word of god and its power and i'm only here to uh, to show you how powerful the word of god is most of you that are watching some of you know me you know that uh uh, uh, I used to be in the world, I, every party I was there, I used to do all these things, and I was very unhappy. I would go to parties and, and party, I had all the boyfriends, you know, I will do the makeup, I'll, you know, look all cute, you know, hang with the, you know, the, 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 the top of the town people, but I was very unhappy. I would go home, and I would, I would just be unhappy. I would wake up, and I'm just so exhausted. I realized that I spent the night with people that I know didn't really like me, and 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 spent partying with them and i'm just exhausted some of the time i spend the money i don't have to buy clothes just to go to a party of a person i don't even really know and and i was very unhappy i i will i, will, I, will, I was just i will go to church all right but i was very very much in the world i was at church i i, I even sang in church i can you know by god's grace he's giving me the gift of you know music i was singing in church but i was very unhappy i was with boyfriend Friends. None of the boyfriends will, will, will satisfy me. Wow, yeah, we, we did all those uh, 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 fornication and all those things. But in the end, I ended up breaking them with them because there was a thirst in me that they couldn't fulfill. That There was something I was searching. And I was looking at all the wrong places. Uh, you hang out. I was hanging out with people I knew really didn't like me. I was hanging out with people I knew really didn't care for me. You know, and I would spend my money to buy clothes and to buy bags. To, to impress people that I, I also had those things. Meanwhile, I could have used the money for more important things. You know, you go and, and swipe your credit card to buy a bag, to, to buy shoes, to buy sunglasses, to wear a certain way, to take pictures, to put on Facebook, to get likes from people who you know don't like you, who you know wishes you wrong. I live that life. I know what that is like. It's pure bondage. You 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 take pictures and then you 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 doubt yourself. You know, some of you women will go through our menstrual times and we have periods and and we have acne and all those things. And then and then we, 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 we go and, and buy all these things because we can't believe that, you know, our skin is imperfect. Somebody that we know don't like us is going to see us. And so we do all these things. I was unhappy. All these things I see on Facebook now. Even now, I see on Facebook. I see all these things happening. Adults, grown women with grown kids are doing it. And I know, I see them and I know what is driving them. They are all unhappy. We, I was unhappy. I was unhappy and, you know, I mean now by god's grace i can even come on facebook and preach to you without makeup i would never do that if somebody was to take a picture of me and post it on facebook without me having makeup i will automatically become depressed how can you post a picture of me without me makeup and i'll worry about what i'm wearing and how i look i was so concerned by what others thought of me i was so concerned by and these people they didn't even like me that's the thing oh 
These people, you know they don't like you, but you are so concerned with what they think. And I was living in pure bondage. Please, if you want to share, go and share. This word is very, very powerful. I was in pure bondage. Boyfriends couldn't do it. The, 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 the Louis Vuittons that I have couldn't do it. The, 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 the nicest cars couldn't do it. The, the most handsomest boyfriends couldn't do it. None of them could satisfy that 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 the hole in my soul, the hole in my in my spirit that 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 I did everything, all that I could, all that I could, and then I came to a point where I was just it was just enough. I have filled the hole with everything. It was just enough. Just like the Samaritan woman, she went with five, five husbands and divorced them. Why? Because she was searching. She was searching and searching. She was searching and searching. Husband number one brought her clothes, but it wasn't enough. So he had to let him go. Husband number two brought her a kid, but it wasn't enough. So he had to let her go. Husband number three brought her properties, houses, beautiful houses, but it wasn't enough. So she had to let him go. Husband number four brought her a fame and 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 and. and a stamina in, in a place in the world and, and, and you know but it wasn't enough so he has to let husband number four go husband number five could sexually satisfy her but it wasn't enough so she had to let husband number five go and now she was out with her pot and she was going back to the place looking for husband number six but I'm telling you it is the word of God and that woman was met by Jesus who Jesus who is the who is the word of God in the flesh and her life was transformed she was changed and she was never going around the Bible says that she left her pot meaning she never came to that place again and tonight if you are watching me and you are in that place where you have taken pictures after pictures you have the best boyfriend you have the best clothes you have all the money in this world but you can't find happiness you you can't go to bed without posting a picture for somebody to know how blessed you are if you are that person you are bound my sister it's on happiness and it's the word of god it is the word of god that can fill you it is the word of god that can change you it is the empty of the word of God that is in your life. You know, when we don't drink water, eh, the, the doctors say that when we don't drink water, when we, anytime we are thirsty, naturally, naturally, when anytime we are thirsty, eh, the, the, the nine things that are happening that you don't even know. When, when your body tells you you are thirsty, oh, there are nine things happening you don't know. One of them is your heart is working harder than it's supposed to. And because your work is, heart is working over time, you, you lose energy to do other things. This is when you are thirsty and you feel the need to, you feel like you should go and drink water. Because doctors tell us that you shouldn't wait to be thirsty to drink water. Because anytime you, you are thirsty, you feel thirsty and you are drinking water, it's probably too late. Your, your body functionings are deteriorating. And that's why your body feels the need to tell you, hey, you need water. So you need to drink water. Even when you don't feel thirsty, they, they tell us that you should drink about 8 to 10 glasses a day of water. Because our body needs it. And some of you, you know, anybody that has made a habit of drinking water, even when they are not thirsty, you can see their skin is better. They are much healthier. They are much energy. I have a friend. She's always drinking water. Always, she won't drink fruits, uh, juices. She doesn't drink anything but water. And she's always happy. She's always healthy. She's always strong. She, among all of us, she was always the strongest. She was, her skin was always glowing. Because this woman, she knows that she doesn't have to wait to drink. She knows the importance of water water it is the same way with the spirit realm when you are missing when things are missing from you when you don't when your spirit is not fed and your and, and your spirit is testing you that you are thirsty you begin to do things you begin to when you don't have the word you begin to search for contentment you begin to search for 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 for, for peace you begin to search for for the things uh, 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 for, 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 for self uh, for self love you begin to search it in the wrong places and then you start dating boys that you that you know they're not good for you you start doing things and some of these things it lead you to making permanent mistakes permanent mistakes some of us by because of it we have gone and had case with men that we know we shouldn't have been with in the first place men that we should have never 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 even given and because of they were in our lives forever they have become a thorn in our flesh tormenting us day and night but my sister my brother the lord wants me to tell you that today is the end of it there is no need for you to continue to go about your life living as if though you 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 you, you have the word of god is there it is there 
there to fill you. What you need is the word of God. You need the word of God to quench that thirst. Nobody can bring you satisfaction. Nobody can bring you peace. But the word of God. And Jesus Christ is the word of God in the flesh. Hallelujah. Some of us, we don't drink water. Until we know we need water. And it's not good. Some of us, is the same. We don't read the word of God. Until we are in trouble, until maybe one of our children is sick in the hospital, in the emergency room, then we are reading the word. Until maybe our spouse is sick, then we are we become we become champions of the word. We have the scriptures memorized. You know, when, when we lose our job, when we are depressed, that's when we are reading the word. But it's too late. There is no need for you to get to that level before you start reading the word of God. You need to be reading the word of God before you because when you don't read the word of God, that's what happens. It takes you to that place. And even some of us, we read the word of God, but we go through that. And even when we go through that, because the word is in us, because the word has built us up, we don't, we don't fall afraid. We don't, we don't cry. You know, Thessalonians, Paul said that we, we should, when we go to trial, we shouldn't behave as if though we are in the world. The world that doesn't have any God because we have a God. We have Christ. That is what happens when you don't read the word. You go through trials and you're just, you're, just, you're just throwing yourself over the floor. Because there's nothing in you to sustain you. People literally have to come and constantly babysit you. People literally have to come and constantly babysit you. Because you don't have the word. But if you have the word, you are strong even in the times of storms. When you have the word, you are at peace. You are in a boat. And the boat is sinking. But like Jesus Christ, he was in the boat sleep. He was in the boat sleeping. And the disciples, oh my God, Jesus, don't you see that we are dying? Jesus, don't you see where? Because the word was not in them. And we become like that. But we don't need to be. The other thing is, when, 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 when the people that drink water, the people that are constantly drinking water, I, today I learned so much from this, researching, that my heart works anytime my body tells me that I'm thirsty. My heart is working over time already. Can you imagine? You 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 begin to lose electrolytes, which is salt. Electrolytes is what what energizes you to work. So by the time your body tells you you are testing and you to drink water, you are already losing electrolytes. Your heart is already working over time. Most of these things it lead to heart diseases. It lead to problems of our health. And the people that drink water, some of you, you know, you know, you have those health freak friends. They're constantly drinking water. They wouldn't drink anything but water. You see that they're always active. They're always happy. They're always, they're not even, they said that even when you don't drink, you're, de you're always dehydrated. You're depressed. I didn't even know that you can be depressed by just not drinking enough water. And if water is able to do that to the soul, the body, this body, which is flesh, how much more the spirit to the word, the word of God to the spirit. The word of God is so important to it feed your spirit. And so as a believer and even as a baby Christian or as someone listening to me that doesn't know Christ. Well, if you become to know, if you come to know Jesus Christ, you need to depend on the word. You need to read the word. You don't need to read that when you're reading the word, when you are only in trials and situations and tribulations, then my sister, you have not grown. You are a baby. And because of that, you become easy for the devil to attack you. The devil attacks you left and right because you don't have the word. Because the word is what the word is is what is what kills is is what uh, position you in the place to fight the devil. And if you don't have the word, that is who you are. The devil just attacks you left and right because the word is not in you. The word is not in you. So everything, every day, you're always sick. You're sick here next day. The next day you're sick here. The following day you're sick here. The following day you're sick here. You are depressed. This mini, mini frustrations, demonic attacks. Your car will break down while you're going to work. And it's the first time of the job. And, and it's like, you don't know. These are all strange demonic attacks. It just come to bring you down. And most of these things, it happens when we don't have the word in us. Because you know what? When you have the word in you, you have discernment. The word automatically builds the gift of discernment in you. You can't have discernment and not the word. The word, because the word, the Bible says that the word of God is sharp, live and active, sharper than the two edged sword. Huh? He says it penetrates, it says it, 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 it penetrates even the devising the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is the word of God that judges spirit, an evil spirit. If you have the word of God in you, you become, you, your spirit is man is built 
And so you are able to, when a person speaks to you, and when they are speaking it, they are of an evil spirit, immediately you know. And that's the gift of discernment. Which we need in this time where false prophets are such abound. False prophets are abounding so much. And we need the word of God to, 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 to make us, to help us, to determine who is a right pastor and who is not. And which pastor is deceiving us just to take our money and who is not. You need the word of God. It is only the word of God that can bring you that, that gift, that, that ability to discern who is really trying to help you and who is really after you. And this, the gift of discernment, I use it more than I use anything. Yeah, I go to, my husband will go to places and pray for people to get healed, yeah. But I use the gift of discernment more than even in raising my children. As a wife, as a mother, in raising my children. I use the gift of discernment in determining which brand I should buy. Which brand is best for my, will be best for, for my kids. Sometimes, naturally, I want to buy the brand that is popular. But the Lord is like, the Holy Spirit is like, no, don't buy that one, buy this. This, all these things, it comes from reading the word of God. And the word of God is to help you better. Just like the water is to help the body grow stronger, so is the word of God. And some of you, I know, I, I know some of you have been testing me, wanting to know how it's like that I develop, you know, uh, I, I've grown in the Lord and how I'm able to, um, to, 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 you know, activate all these giftings and all these things in my life. It never starts easy. I started with going to Bible studies. And then I'm reading the Bible. I, that's how I started. And then initially, I decided that, you know what? I won't just read the Bible. I won't just go to Bible studies to just read the Bible. I had to spend time at home to study the Word. So what I did was I'll start reading um, the, uh, the Gospels. Gen uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in the beginning, it was like really timid to me. It was really boring. I mean, I'll read it. But then I didn't really understand most of it. And most of you, I want to tell you the practical way. It's never easy when you decide to make the Bible part of your life. You know why? Because before that, you have really been living in the flesh. And the flesh will fight you. Because right now, like I did a video with addiction and I told you the soul and the spirit. You know, when your soul, your soul is where you do everything. Your soul is where your desire is, where you want to eat, where you desire to wear uh, a different that type of clothes. That you know me, I like to wear jeans a lot. You know, and it's coming from my soul. Uh, I like to do things. So your behavior, going to parties all the time, spending money to buy things to impress people you know don't like you, trying to keep up with the Joneses where you know you don't have money. All these things, it comes from the soul. It comes from your soul. It comes from your soul. And if you are living and your spirit is not really strong to control the works and the things of the soul, you begin to live. That's when you live in the world. You live in the world and you give yourself to the flesh. And then, you you know, you start sleeping with people. Then it's never enough. Then you start finding yourself in addictions and all those things. You understand what I'm saying? So that's where it is. So in the beginning, your, your body will fight it. Your flesh will fight it. Your flesh will fight it. Reading the word of God, then you even fall asleep. I can't imagine to tell you how many times I'll read the word and I'll fall asleep. But guess what? Before that... I would never sleep till 3 a.m. Before I really decided to give my life to God, I would never sleep. I was always awake till 5 a.m., 6 a.m., watching all sorts of things. Sometimes I would be watching porn. I want to be honest with you. I would even be watching porn because I'm just, I'm, I'm can't sleep. I watch movies and I watch porn and I was just watching all sorts because at that time you're supposed to be sleeping, but your eyes are on. That's the devil. But immediately, I decided to do away with the things of the, and begin to pick the Bible. Car, I fall asleep quicker than the speed of light. That is the devil. Don't give up. Keep doing it. The other thing is, you'll be reading the word of God and you're just bored. You're just bored. That is your spirit. That's your flesh fighting you. Especially reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Listen to me. Now that I have come to really know Christ more than I used to. There is no books that I love more than the Gospels. The Gospels are like, I was even saying to a sister, they are like my babies now. 
I everything in my life I go back to the gospels. Right now I read them so much that every decision that I'm making, I run the decision through the gospels. And you can come to that place. The gospels, eh? They they stand on their own. I'm not saying that disregard the other books in the Bible, but the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they stand on your own. They stand on your own because the gospel is Jesus and Jesus is Old Testament made manifested in the new. Jesus was in the beginning. Oh, Jesus was in the beginning. Genesis to Revelations is all about him. And I love, 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 love the, the gospels, especially John. Anytime I go to church and the pastor will say, let's open our Bibles to John. My heart just leaps. My heart just leaps. I don't know why, but I have fallen in love with the word of God. And you know why? It, it, it's, it's something that I need and fallen. So it's like the people that constantly drink water, but they have fallen in love with water. You know, it's like I need the word of God. And the more you read it, the more revelation you get of God, the more you realize you need the word. And so you begin to read it. And it wasn't like that. And my sister, my brother, I want to tell you, it was not like, it was not like that in the beginning. I w when I decided that I wanted to build myself in the Lord, it was tough. It was tough. Anytime I pick up the Bible, it's either I'm forcing myself not to sleep or I would just be bored. But keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's working. The other thing is, just like when you drink water, you don't know what it's doing in your body. But then you know deep down inside you, it's doing so much things. So is the word. When you read it, anytime you take a scripture and you read it, you feel like maybe you, uh, even uh, uh, John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. Even that you feel like, is that nothing for me? Is that nothing for me? It's not one of those encouraging scriptures. Jesus wept. And so, but I'm telling you, you have no idea. Yesterday, this morning, I was thinking about that scripture. And I've gotten about four Four, four powerful, uh, 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 because Jesus wept. What, what made Jesus weep? Now it's making me want to connect to other scriptures about weeping. What causes others to weep? And that itself is a revelation on his own, which I will come to share and I know will be a blessing to somebody. So read the Bible. If it doesn't matter, especially Matthew, Mark, if you're starting, I want you to start with the Gospels. Start with Matthew. You, you know, even in the now, in the time that we're in now, start with John. Start with John because the time that we're in, we are in a dark time and you need to know Jesus as the light in the time of our darkness. So start with John, then go back to Matthew, then Mark, then Luke. But start, start with John. When you start with John and you begin to read John, you begin to really fall in love and then you want to read the other books. So start with John. But when you're starting, it's not easy. Especially if you're somebody who has been doing more, devoting themselves into the things of the flesh. It's not easy. It's not easy. Your flesh will fight you. Anytime you pick up the Bible, a friend will call. You're going to have to also make conscious decisions to, to ignore the things that fight you. Anytime you pick up the Bible, that boyfriend will call. That person that you're probably, you're feeling for. The person that you are really wanting, that boy that you really like, but has never been re really trying to respond to you. That girl that you really like, but has never really been trying to respond to you. Immediately you pick up your the, uh, the Bible to read. You see that person calling you. That's the devil. I'm telling you. And then you put the book Bible down. Then you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. You realize that you've gained nothing. Then you keep doing that. Then you pick up the Bible again. Then you're reading. Then something happens. Then you pick up the Bible again, you realize something happens. You pick up the Bible again, then you realize something happened. That is the devil. He's trying to fight your focus, but don't give in. And so you have to make a conscious decision that if you're going to dedicate 12, 15 minutes a day, let's say from 9 to 9.15, to read the word of God, you're going to have to make a conscious decision that you are not going to let anything, anything, take your focus away. Even if it's a call from your mother or your father, it can wait. It's just 15 minutes. There's nothing you can do with that 15 minutes time. It can wait. So you're going to have to make a conscious decision. A conscious decision. To fight it. 
to, to disregard the, the, the attempts and the and the ways of the of the of, of, of the devil. And if you please, if you want to share, go ahead and share. Because most of you, you know, many people need this. I wish that when I wanted to draw closer to God, because you know that the, the, the you know the Lord He's been calling me even as I was in those times, even when I was 15, 17, there was a pull from him always. But I didn't have anybody who was at my age doing this, sharing these things with you. Sometimes I wonder if I had somebody like that talking to me, telling me these things, where I will be, where I will be. So please share because that is the only reason why I come on here. Most of us, we are, they are in the, you're in the world, you're doing all sorts of things. You, you, you lack, you lack, you lack, you lack, you lack fulfillment. And you're looking for it in all the wrong places. You're looking for it in, the, in all the wrong places. It is only God. It's only God. It is only God and the word of God that can bring you in that place. But I didn't have anybody. And so I went with the flow. But I even thank God that even while I was doing these things, I didn't even end up in a car crash and die. Because then I would have to wonder, where am I going? My goodness. Where am I going? Now people are looking at Ebony, who died. And people are wondering where she went. Everybody is wondering, where did Ebony go after all? People were saying, well, you know, she accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord's Savior three days before. While well, she was reading the Bible and she was good. But we don't know. Nobody can for, for certain say that they know where she's going. And some of us, that's our life. We think we can't die, but we can die at any time. We can die at any time. Any death can take any of us. And where are you going? Can you ask yourself, where am I going? If Christ is to, the Lord is to say, you know what? You've done enough and take your life out of you. Where are you going? And so it is essential that we don't give into the things of the flesh. And we learn these things. And that's why I come on to do these videos. That we should, to, to caution you. The Lord, the Holy Spirit drives me. He gives me the boldness and the empowerment to come and share these things with you. So that's why I always tell you to share so that it can be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. But the other thing is. It will fight you. The devil will fight you. He will fight you when you're trying to read. And the other thing is, set a time. It helps to set a time. Set a watch. Set an alarm clock, a reminder. That you know what? From this time to this time, I'm going to read the word. From this time to this time, I have dedicated this time to read the word of God. And that's what I'm going to do. Set, have, make a conscious effort to do that. You know? And if you do that, then it's like, you know what? And you can even start with small. Start with 20 minutes. 7 to 7.20. I will read the word every day. 7 to 7.20. When you do that, it becomes... I'm sorry that the, the thing has changed. I'm, I'm, my phone is dying, so I'm trying to get it to charge. But it, 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 it sets it as a place in your life that you have to go to. When you do that. It's better than you not doing that and just waiting on... on just waiting on... Um, at any time to just read the word is 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 better that way so set set a time set a time like you know what i will do this seven o'clock eight o'clock i uh I, I will spend 20 minutes every day to study the word once you do that it will be a blessing unto you the other thing is you have to make sure that when you set that time you let nothing take you away and i'm telling you now if you decide to do it the devil will fight you the devil will fight you. Your flesh will fight you. Because your flesh like being in control of you. Your flesh like being taking absolute control of your life. Taking in absolute control of everything that you do. He likes it. So he will fight you. Your flesh like you fornicating. You wanting to sleep with those boys. Your flesh like you, you going to all those parties. You know that it doesn't really help you. Your flesh like you desiring all these, uh, 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 all these putting money that you don't have into buying bags so that you can show it to others. You know, I'm not saying that it's bad to wear brand names. I love brand name bags. I have an obsession with bags. But if you only have $500... And you lose four ninety four ninety five of it to go and buy a bag, my sister. You have a problem. If you only have a thousand dollars, my brother, and you use nine hundred dollars of it to go and buy a Louis Vuitton shoes, 
a Louboutin shoes, you, you, you have a problem. You have a serious problem. And these are the things that the word of God will take you away from. That bondage, that need to buy things to impress others, it will take you away from it. Some of you, you have to cut the time you spend on Facebook. The Lord is telling me now. And spend quality time with him. If you spend, you should, some of you should calculate the amount of time you spend on Facebook. Some of you, when you calculate it all together, going off, coming on, going off, coming on, you probably spend about four hours. The Lord wants you to reduce some of that, to use that to spend time with him. And what do I mean by, by spending time with him? You sit quietly. You take your word of God, even if it's on your Bible. Or, or, and and I, will, I, I know most of us, our word is in the, in, 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 the, uh, in the app, in the phone. I will, I, will, I will ask you, my sisters, my brothers, I will ask you in the name of the Lord to get a, 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 a Bible, a real Bible. You know why? Because when you are reading the Bible, the devil will try to test, tempt you by having other people, uh, people call you or test you or WhatsApp you, those notifications. You will see that when you're reading the word, it will come on. So if you can buy a Bible, please do that. If you, if you have a Bible already, I would rather you use that time, you use the Bible as that, to use that quiet time instead of your phone. Use a real Bible, a, a, a Bible, you know, a, a bound book to start reading the word of God. That will help you rather than going to, um, uh, on your phone, because your phone, you get distracted with the, with the notifications, with the calls that will come in, with the things that will come in, it will distract you. So I will even tell you to please, 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 please get a Bible. It will help you. Then you set time apart. Even if it's 20 minutes, you set time apart and you read it. You go to a quiet place. You can even go to the bathroom sit on the bathroom and in on the toilet and just read in the bathroom there's quietness some of us we go into the bathroom and we are on our phone iphones we are checking facebook we are checking this we are checking that you can even take your bible just go and find a quiet because in the toilet nobody will come and bother you everybody think you're doing something that they don't want to know <laughs> and because of that they won't bother you you can go to your bedroom you can go into your closet I prefer you go into your closet. Go sit in your closet, as small as it is. And because once you begin to develop, and, and, and it's very important, when you set up these places, it becomes a personal sanctuary in your home. So even instead of the bathroom, go into your closet. I know all of you have closets full of clothes. Go into your closet. Go and sit among somewhere in your shoes and take your Bible and read it. And the more you do that, 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 then you are wanting to pray. I'm giving you step of step by how the Lord has built my life from being in bondages to where I'm at now. You begin to want to pray after you've read the word. You begin to speak in tongues after you've read. You begin to speak in tongues without it. That is the spirit of the living God. It means your spirit is, is, is awake. Your spirit is, is alive. Your spirit is, 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 is living. Your, yeah, closet is, hmm. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, sometimes I was even telling you, I'll go to a, my closet is where I'm, everything goes down. The presence, the power, the experiences I've had in my closet. Sometimes I stay in my closet for four hours. I sleep in my closet. You know why? Because it's better than my, my bed. My bed is very comfortable. My bed is very, very comfortable. But the presence I experience in my closet, sometimes I sleep there. My children now, they've even made it a habit to come to the closet to look for me. Yes. They have made it. They were looking for mommy. They will come into the closet looking for mommy because they know where mommy is. It is in a closet where the, I experience the presence of God. So, and because when you do that, you build that place. Eh? Guess what happens? Now, when you go there, immediately you feel God. 
Oh Jesus, atonimi sinimi kantonimi ya. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I can even open up, uh, open up uh, uh, my 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 heart or something to really tell you. You come to that place where you feel God. You come to me, and anytime I go to my closet, God talks to me. Anytime, anytime I go into my closet, God talks to me. Anytime I go into my closet. Because I have made it a place where I go to read and pray. Sometimes now, I don't even have to open my mouth. Immediately I sit there. Immediately I sit there. Ah, it's like at the well. When the lady went and she met Jesus. That's, and most, you can have that experience. My sisters, my brothers. You can have that experience. But it starts from somewhere. So start. Start giving 20 minutes. Go into your closet. Go into to the bathroom. You can even, if some of you, if you don't have closet, fine. Go to the bathroom. You give that 20 minutes. You read the word. You read the word. You can start with, 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 with John, like I'm saying. You read the word. Sometimes it's boring. You read it. You don't really get anything. Nothing changes in you. But it's like water. When you, read, when you drink water, you know that you don't see anything. You don't see your skin becoming clearer. Immediately you drink water. But you deep down inside you, you know that water has done something for you. You know. You know. And it's the same way. Every word of God you read does something to your spirit. Every word of God, every verse, even Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. 35, even Jesus wept, does something to your spirit. It helps your spirit grow. And the more you read the word, huh? the more you read the word, and start with the chapter. Even if the 20 minutes, don't be too quick to read through. Spend the 20 minutes on just one chapter. You know, you start with John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word dwelt among men, and the word became flesh, and the word, and the, uh, the, the word became the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not, and you're reading, and you're reading, and then you realize that you're done with chapter one, but then there's more time, maybe 15 minutes left in, 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 in that time, you go back to John, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God the same way then you realize that after you're done reading chapter one um you have 10 minutes left go back to john john chapter one same thing you do it you do it that way you do it that way consistently to the 20 minutes is up then you say lord i thank you for your word i bless you for your word i pray that your word will bear fruit in me i pray that your word will will help me that what i have word that i've read will help me grow in jesus name then you, you know you say a quick short prayer you don't something you don't have to pray just say talk to god lord uh, you know how i am you know where i'm at you know i'm not the perfect place that i need to be right now but i'm trying lord as i've read the word please let the word do something in me let the word begin to change me lord in the name of jesus and then that's it you leave the closet you go about your life the following day you realize it's seven you set your time seven to seven twenty you go to your bathroom, to your closet, to any quiet, to your car. Go to your car. Some of you, you can go to your car. Just go back, go and sit in your car. And then just, you know, don't, don't turn on music. Don't turn on music while you're reading. No. Read it by yourself. Don't, you don't need music to read the word of God. Don't turn on music. Nothing. Silence. Just you and the Bible. And I will prefer that you get a Bible, actual Bible, not a, a, a phone. Because the devil can use the phone to distract you with notifications. And they will distract you. Because what I'm trying to do is get you to drink water. Like the word. Drink the word like water. And when you're drinking water, you don't have other things sitting in a cup. You only have water and a cup. So, don't take your phone for that 20 minutes, don't take your phone. Wherever you're going, if you're going to the bathroom, if you're going to the car, if you're going to the bathroom, bedroom, if you're going to your closet, don't take the phone. Don't take anything. Take the Bible with you. Some of you, you probably have the gift of prophecy, the revelational gifts already. So take a book and a pen. Because some of you probably in the God is probably searching for you. Immediately you start reading, you get revelations. So if you're gonna take anything with you. Take a book and a pen and an actual Bible, an actual book Bible. You take that with you and you go. And then when you go, 
you read the word and whilst you are reading 20 minutes you give time spend the whole 20 minutes on one chapter spend the whole 20 minutes i've spent 30 minutes on one verse bef before so i know what i'm talking about i've spent 30 minutes on one verse before because i needed the revelation and i couldn't go without it and so i was just looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and reading it and then this is what i do i'll read it in other versions <laughs> and i'll come back to new king james and i'll read it again and then bam the revelation comes those that seek the lord ha the bible says that blessed are those who test for righteousness they shall be filled i'm telling you my sister my brother if you test for the things of god if you test for god he will fill you those that diligently seek him he rewards them he rewards them most of you you watch my videos the power of god comes to your homes to touch you the power of god comes to your homes to touch you and you write me and you send me these things how did I get to that place? It's by reading. It's by starting with five minutes. It's by going then 20 minutes, then 30 minutes, then one hour. With the word. And I'm telling you, nobody has to tell you to pray when you have the word in you. The word in you is life. It will speak to you. The word speaks. It will speak to you to pray. You'll be sleeping and you'll be praying. Nobody has to tell me to pray. Nobody. And by God's grace now, I spend quality amount of time. I even tight in prayer. I more than tight. 24 hours, I pray more than the 10th of the 24 hours in prayer every day. And I'm a very busy person. But I, I have to pray. That's the thing, oh. Is, is you come to the place where you like to pray or you want to pray. Now I'm at the place where I have to. If I don't pray, I will, I will be like a, 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 a drug, somebody who, who is on drugs. I'll just be itchy. I'll be irritated. My, my whole body, I'll just be upset. I'll just be upset. And now I can't just pray 20 minutes. It's not possible. I must pray. Yeah. I must pray long, long hours now because, hello, mommy. I must pray long hours now because I need it. You understand? Just like those people that, that don't drink water until they need water. On, you know, that, I'm sorry, those people that drink water because they have gotten used to drinking water. Because once you get used to drinking water, when you're drinking 12, 13 cups of water a day, your body is now your your skin is good your 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 intestines are good your body is working very well your skin is clear and the water you need the water to to continuously to let your skin continue your body to work your organs to work on it and so you continue to drink uh the 12 or 13 glasses of water you even begin to drink more because your body depends on it to continue to, to look beautiful to continuously to be healthy as is, is the same thing with the things of the spirit you come to the place nobody has to tell you to pray and nobody has to tell you to spend long hours in prayer. Nobody has to tell you. Nobody. Even when you don't pray and you fall asleep, you wake up upset with yourself. You wake up upset that you didn't pray. You can come. And that is when you come to that place. That is, that is a Christian who is living in the authority. A person like that. How can a demon come and sleep with you? How? A person that is praying two hours a day. How can a demon come and sleep with you? A person that is reading the word of God, meditating day and night. What does David say? He says, he says, blessed are those who read them, who meditate on the word of God day and night. They are like what? Psalms 1. If somebody can post it for me, it's in Psalms 1. If you read of the word of God and you're meditating on day and night, he says that you are like the tree planted by the water. Ah, ah, he says everything, everything you do will prosper. Everything. Those who meditate on the word day and night. Those who meditate on the word day and night. He says they are like trees planted by the rivers of... Ah, 
Everything you do, how can a demon come and attack you in your dreams? When you have the word of God dwelling in you. When you was, and, and people like that, the people that study the word and pray, their prayers are effective. They pray, so some of you, if you don't have the word of God, you have to pray maybe 10 hours, spend maybe 10 hours in prayer. But people that have the word of God, they spend 2 hours because you know what? You pray based on the word. You pray based on revelation. And as you are praying, the word is being revealed to you. Scriptures begin to pop in your mind. And the Lord will lead you to pray against those things. The other thing is that the word, eh, he says, it judges thoughts and intents of the heart. That is something we need more than anything right now. Thoughts and intents of the heart. These, things, these two things, some of you, you may not know the difference. But the word is good enough. Like me now, I'm sitting now, I'm still in my Adamic nature. I'm still in my Adamic nature. Every human being, we don't do away with our Adamic nature. It's still there. And, you know, if somebody hurts me, I immediately want to probably insult them that is your adamic nature you are upset so immediately the thought in your in your it comes in your mind to curse them or insult them back or something but if the word of god is in you immediately you begin to think that the word will judge it the word will judge it say hey you are a child of god behave yourself be quiet that is the difference between people who are living in the way they have self-control which is the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 22 they have self-control the word of god bring you self-control and so it judges your thoughts it judges your thoughts and your motives it judges your thoughts and your motives why are you wearing that tight skirt is it because you don't have any other skirts or you have other skirts but you're wearing that skirt to go to church so that you can entice men that's motive if the word of god is in you that's why i'm always saying that some of these people that dresses those ways the word of god is not in them the word of god is not in them it judges the thoughts and the intents the motives of the heart why you are doing what you're doing why you're doing what you're doing it judges it when you go and and dance a church in, in in you know and i'm saying don't praise god but some of you you only do that because you're wearing new kente so you want to show off that's intense of the heart are you really dancing to glorify god or you're dancing to show off your kente. Which is it? Which is it? If the word of God is in you, even before you make it out of the aisle to come in there, is judging it. Go back. It will tell you. Go back. That sister that you are helping, giving her money, you know that she's in need. Giving her money. You know that person is in need. Giving her money. That lady... Is it because she's single and you know that if you keep giving her money, you're going to get a chance to sleep with her? Is that why you're doing it? That's intense of the heart. The word of God is the only one that can judge it. And we are human beings. We are natural. We have evil thoughts. Paul even said it. Who can deliver me? What can deliver? What a wretched man I am. He says the things I want to do, I do them not. And the things I do not want to do, that I find myself doing. What a wretched man I am. Thank you, my sister. But it is the word of God. It is the word of God. It is the word of God that judges the thoughts and the intents, the motive of why we do the things we do. It is the word of God that judges them. It is the word of God. And if you have the word of God in you, it empowers you. It emboldens you to fight these things. So immediately you are walking, you see that the Lord is pulling at your heart. You feel a very strong grip, a very strong conviction. And immediately you want to stop because you know God is talking to you. Hallelujah.
And that is why most of you, I see you, I, I, and the Lord speak to me. He tells me all these things about these people. And I'm like, Lord, how are they going to be set free from these things? And he said, it's only my word. It is only my word. It is not another prophetic conference. It is not, it's my word. It's standing, sitting, at, sitting at home, spending time and studying the word of God. That is the only way. What does some say? Some say that blessed is he. Someone, blessed is he, is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the ways that sinners take in the counsel of the wicked and the counsel of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Someone, but whose delight is in the word of God, who meditates on his word day and night. What does David say? He says, this person... That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yield fruit in its season, whose leaves does not wet her. Whatever they do, manama, apani mikata, whatever they do, manu musikatani mikata, whatever they do, it prospers. Whatever they do, it prospers. When you are reading, I'm not saying that praying is bad though. When you are reading, it says, a person who, who prays, it says a person who meditates on his law day and night, which means it's important. And even prayer, you have to pray based on revelation. You have to pray based on the word of God because God only listens to his word to perform. He listens to his word to perform. He says, I send out my word and it never returns to me void. But it accomplishes what I have sent it to do. So it is the word. You stand on the word to pray. And the Lord will. The word that you stand on to pray. The Lord will send it to accomplish what. It is it's supposed to accomplish in your life. And that is why when people ask me. I had a sister send me. Ask me. Call, attack, pull me. And said sister Jennifer. I, I want to read. I only have 20 minutes a day. And I don't know which one I should do, pray or read. <laughs> then I said, use that whole 20 minutes to read the word. Because once the word of God is in you enough, nobody will tell you to make time to pray. And the thing about prayer, that some people think you have to make time to go somewhere to pray. Or you can be cooking and you're praying. You can be showering and you're praying. You can be in the bathroom and you're praying. Prayer and, and the best type of prayer is when the Holy Spirit has given you the inspiration to pray. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <sighs> it's when the Holy Spirit has given you inspiration to pray. That is the He, he orders your step. He counsels you. He teaches you. And the person that is praying based on revelation, based on the word, ah! A person that is praying, standing on the word and praying, nothing, nothing that they want, God won't do for them. Because this is what the Lord told me. He said, most of the time, you people, you ask things. He says, I'm more willing to do them for you, more than you're willing to ask. That's what the Lord said to me. I'm more willing to, to do the things you ask from me, more than more than you are even willing to ask so we need to pray based on revelation based on the word he Paul looks on his word to perform that's very very important so yeah spend time 20 minutes devote that time but it is progressive it is progressive 20 minutes then when you continuously do that you realize that you know what I want to spend more time so then it will come to 30 minutes then it will come to 40 minutes then after that you feel the need you should pray sometimes when you're reading the word will convict you you cry you just cry i don't know how many times i've read the word and it convicted me ah oh, my goodness the word will just convict you when you're in your closet and then and the things you're dealing with the stresses of life it will convict you and you begin to cry when you experience those moments, that is the presence of God. That is the Holy Spirit manifesting in your life. And then nobody will tell you to pray after. 
you begin to just open your mouth and pray. And those moments, they are the most precious, most beautiful moments. I love those moments so much. When I'm reading the word of God, and the presence of God just comes and convicts me. Ah! It's so sweet. It, it's, like, it's like eating your favorite food. Ah! And when you're done, you're so filled. Ah! You're so filled. That fulfillment. I want everybody to experience it. Experience it. It's like a piece of heaven. I tell you. I tell you. A piece of heaven. A piece of heaven. Ah! There's nothing like it. I love the word of God. I live for the word of God. I love to pray. And I love to worship. But I tell you. Me, Akosi Opuni, I love the word of God more than anything. I love revelations. There is nothing like when a preacher is preaching and is preaching and is giving revelations. I just want to, even at church, I can't control myself. I just want to leap and just run all in the, in the church. Because liberation has come to me. Hallelujah. And I want all of you to experience this. Even now, as I'm talking about the word, the power and the presence of God that is resting upon me right now, I can't even describe it to you. I can't describe it. The power and the presence. And some of you, I know you feel it. I know God is using it to convict you. He's calling you, come back to my word. Come back. Come back. You give him 20 minutes. Just like giving him five loaves of bread. Huh? He will multiply it and feed 5,000. And you feed 5,000 in you. And you have 12 baskets left. Listen to me. You will never, it will never be a waste. The, 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 the giving some time to the word of God. Never be a waste. I tell you. I tell you. It will never be a waste. You will grow. You will grow and then you do away with the things of the flesh. The things that used to bother you, the things that used to anger you, you no longer get angered by them. You walk away. Things when you, you first, you, if somebody, I, me at first, when somebody did, I used to be the one that my friends would come and get to come and drive to other people's house because we've heard that they've talked about us. And so my friend will call me, Hey, Jennifer, can you imagine this person said this about me? And then I'm like, okay, let's go. I get my car. We are driving all the way. So stupid and so foolish. Or on Facebook. If I see that somebody has, has done something to me, I would type up a whole insult and hide it in, in, in a, to insult them on Facebook. So stupid and foolish acting. Carnal living. Carnality. When the word of God is in you, it judges your in, uh, thoughts and motives. Why are you writing that status that you are writing? Are you writing it because you want to insult somebody or you want to attack somebody? Is that why the word of God will judge it? And some of you, even if you don't, you see that the, Lord of, the word of God will pressure, the Holy Spirit will pressure you and then you want to go and delete it. And you delete it. That's the word of God in operation in your life. You begin to dress well. Immediately you're wearing the clothes and it's too tight. The word will convict you. It judges the thoughts and motives and the intents of the heart. It will judge it. The other thing is it feeds your spirit. It makes your spirit man awake. Some of you, you're dealing with, 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 with demons coming to sleep with you in the dreams. You're dealing with fornication. You're dealing with, 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 with uh, 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 spiritual marriages. You're dealing with all these things. You're dealing... It will, it will just work itself out. The more of the word of God is in you, you're praying in tongues, your tongues will change. Then, all those things, you begin to have strength. First, witches will beat you in the dreams. Ah, now you can stand and beat them too. Or tell them, run out, get away from me. And they, they won't even come into your dreams. They won't even come. They won't even come. And even if they come to your dreams, you have authority over them. You understand what I'm saying? So, learn to read the word. The other thing is, you come to a place where you get revelations. That is the part I like the most. The revelations part. Because the revelations, it helps you in your life. It brings you understanding. 
and it also helps your work in life it helps with your decision making as to what you should do the type of man you should want to marry the type of woman you should want to marry that that is this is the best part and so please pay attention to this part because it's so so important the word of god does the all the part that i've been talking about is cleansing is the word cleansing the evil the carnality out of you the first phase is the cleansing once it's done cleansing it builds you it builds you and this is the part i want to talk about you come to a place where you are reading the word now now you're getting revelations and these revelations is what the lord used to build your life some of you you are probably wanting to marry who should you marry i spent a whole year in the word of god building myself praying at least three hours a day before my husband came into my life 2011 i prayed i read the bible i spent at least one hour two hours reading the word and i prayed at least three hours a day at least three hours a day 2011 those were my glorious years i always look back to those days though my pastor has told me to let go of the past <laughs> and you know the, the the latter rain is greater <laughs> and i've heard him but you know i used to and so the word of god is in me and at that time i want to tell you this story there was a guy came into my life a very prominent guy very popular famous a national almost like a national treasure type of guys came into my life and this guy of course he's rich and at that time you know every woman that wants to marry wants to be secured financially so even though if you could have your own money me i didn't have my own money but he was handsome he was he was built he was great and 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 caring and he had money money and you know he's like i want to marry you he took me on trips around the world i was traveling enjoying myself but the Lord said, one time I was sitting there and I was talking, I was like, Lord, I think he's the one. The Lord said to me, if you marry him, you're going to marry Saul. I was like, what? That's how the Lord speaks to you in, in, in the word. He says, you are looking at Saul. That's not David. He's Saul. So who is Saul? Saul is the king, the Israelites, huh, went and asked God for. They were, they were there and they said, you know what? We don't want to be like, you know, Moses in Exodus 33 pleaded that the Lord God will be the God over them and reign over them. Please catch this revelation. Stay clear attention and learn this because if you catch this, it, that's it. My job is done. If, and, and so the king they didn't have a king. God was their king. And that's what Moses wanted. They came to a place in the book of Samuel where they were like, you know what? We no longer want to be separate. We want to be like the other nations. When you read Exodus, the David, uh, uh, um, uh, Moses said, God, go with us because we don't want to be like the other nations. We want to be separate. And your presence going with us will separate us. Be the king of our lives. But they didn't want that. They came to Samuel chapter in First Samuel. They didn't want that anymore. They wanted king like the other ones. Go and read it, First Samuel. Go and read it. They said, "We want." Go. They went to Samuel and said, "Samuel, anoint a king. Give us a king like the other nations." And Samuel went to God and said, "God, what do they want me to?" He said, "You know what, Samuel? It's not you. They have rejected. It's me. They have rejected." And so they went and got Samuel. Uh, they went and got Saul. What did Saul do? Saul destroyed the Israelites. We're just doing all sorts of things. He wasn't listening to the word of God. He was, he was just crazy. And the Lord raised up David. Now David is the best years of the Israelites. You understand what I'm saying? So when the Lord said to me, it is not 
that boy you're looking at, that guy you're looking at, that you think has money and all that stuff you're looking at, that is your soul. And you are Israel. You want like your own because you like you want to be look like the other people with riches, but you you are Israel and you need a David. And that guy is a soul. But who is David? David is that wretched guy, eh? In the wilderness. When when he, uh, when someone went and went and got him, they said that he was handsome, all right, but he was wretched. He was all raggedy and he's 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 in the wolves, just writing psalms unto the Lord. He's in the wilderness, writing psalms, and love writing psalms, not really doing much. He's not he's not the handsome guy. David is that guy in the Bible studies, always reading the Bible, always going on the Bible, never go to the parties, never quite dresses right. And the Lord said, be careful because who you choose to marry will determine your life. If you go and you marry Saul, he will destroy your life. Can you imagine? This is how the Lord spoke to me in Revelations. So when my husband came, I knew it was David. You know why? Because he loved the word of God more than I. He was spiritually more sound and he also had money. He was well to do. But he was also more spiritually ground. He was more, he was in a spiritual higher height. This is a person, and if some of you, you're watching, you can go refer back. This is a person who can lead me into my destiny. Who can wash me through the, to, who, can, who can cleanse me through the washing of the word. Like Paul tells husbands to do in Ephesians 5.25. You see, oh, that is what the word of God is able to do. It gives you revelation. It builds your life. It, it, it makes you, helps you to make right decisions, especially important decisions. It helps you make important decisions. If I had not married my husband, I would not be sitting here with the passion and, and feel of the Holy Ghost and feel of fire of God to preach to you. He is the best thing and I thank God every day that I did not marry Saul and I married David. It is only the word of God that can bring that person in your life. You don't think. My husband, when I met him, all he was wearing was khaki. I mean, he's here, so I know he's probably listening. He's laughing. And I didn't really like khaki much. I didn't like khaki. I'm like, oh Lord, what is this? And then he drove this really, really... um Volkswagen car <laughs> and I was like oh lord <laughs> he drove this 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 Volkswagen car it was really like an old cars too an old Vos, uh, Volkswagen and then he had tapes this is 2010 uh, 11 2011 he had tapes cassette tapes can you imagine <laughs> Cars were being made with CDs and he had cassette tapes. <laughs> I know he's sitting here. <laughs> he's sitting here. He's probably like, this girl, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> he had cassette tape in his car. Ah! And me at that time, me, I like nice cars, you know. <laughs> I like nice cars. But he was a man full of and when he stand to pray, at that time I was strong, spiritually strong, but he was in a place where, my goodness, fire was in his mouth. But he also had money. He could have bought the best cars he wanted. He had enough money to buy a Mercedes Benz. And he had enough money to buy Escalades and all those other Porsches and things. But he wanted to drive a Volkswagen with, with, with the ones with cassette tape and save his money. So
So whatever thing that I was looking at, that other guy thinking that I, if I leave him, I may not get it again. The one that God gave me, he gave those things to me and even more. A man who knows his word. A man who can make me holy by cleansing me through the word. Hallelujah. And that was because I was studying the word of God. And the word of God had built my spirit and it was leading me to the right person in my life. How many times must you continue to make bad decisions? How many times? Ask yourself. How many times? How many times? And then you, you wait and then you go to God and you are crying. <gasps> Oh God, oh God. But even when you were making that decision, you didn't even consult him. Oh, my sister, my brother, you didn't even consult him. You just went your way and you did whatever you wanted to do. Be honest. You just did what you wanted to do. Now you're crying. That is the word of God. The other thing is, me, because maybe I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching and I'm teaching, it gives me revelations. To preach to others like I was on there and I was teaching on the word um, what is the word um, I was teaching on the difference between um, um, Joseph and and Adam you know in the Bible in Genesis chapter 2 the Bible says that Adam God had given him everything and he told him don't eat of the, of the tree of the, of the of the knowledge of good and evil and in Joseph, when you go to Genesis 39, the Bible says that Joseph, you know, he had been entrusted with everything in the Potiphar's house, except Potiphar's wife. But then Potiphar's wife was tempting him to sleep with him. But Joseph wouldn't give in. The Bible says the day after day, she would test, she would tempt Joseph, but Joseph won't give in. You understand what I'm saying? Joseph won't give in. But Adam... He had been given everything in the Bible, in, in, in the world. He had dominion. He said, but God said, this one, don't eat. But the Bible says he ate. Just one try, he ate. He didn't even question his wife. He just ate. So when I was reading, well, at that time, I was studying uh, uh, the, the book of uh, Genesis 31, 39. And the Lord, immediately as I was reading it, he referred me. To Genesis chapter 2. You know why? Why can how can the Lord refer me? Because I have read it. I have read it. I have studied that word. And so is in me. And so immediately I read it. He's trying to tell me something. What is he trying to tell me? He's trying to tell me at that time. Because you know when you read Ad, uh, that, Adam. The Bible says that God will walk into, into the garden. And speak with him. And, and at Joseph it was just through dreams. God will talk to him. But Joseph was more willing to obey God than Adam who had God working to him. So sometimes it's not the manifestations that, that causes you to draw closer to the Lord. That causes you to help you to obey God. Some of us, we think that if we are able to maybe see angels or maybe see Jesus fully, fully, then maybe when he talks to us, we'll be able to listen. But in the case of Adam and Joseph, that wasn't the case. Adam could see God, but yet when he was tempted, he fell and he ate the fruit. Yum, yum, yum. But Adam, uh, Joseph, he couldn't see God. God only speaks to him in his dreams. But when Potiphar's wife tempted him, he did not bite. He did not touch her. The Bible says day after day. Guess what other revelation I got? I got a revelation of can the Lord trust you? Where it's tight. Some of us, God has given us everything. God has given us everything. He has given us the strength to work and make a hundred percent of our money. He says, give me that one tithe, that ten percent. Give that to me. That we chop to. So in a sense, we are like Adam. So by that revelation, you see how many, how many words I've gotten. How many words I've gotten. Is the network bad? How many words I've gotten? Is the network bad? How many words I've gotten? I've gotten so much word by just that. 
not only that the lord is reassuring me that just because i may not see angels or somebody may not see angels it doesn't mean that the lord is not it doesn't mean that uh it, it, those that see angels it makes it easier for them to believe the lord but i've also gotten the revelation huh about titan that when we don't tight we are like adam when we've been given everything and we god tells us this one thing this one thing don't touch this one thing this one thing that is tight give it to me here thank you ladies thank you all this one thing that god is give it god god says give it to me you spend because you say that you don't have enough so and now i've gotten the message can the lord trust you from just that scripture Guess who was also given everything, but yet and went to take somebody else's thing? The person who did that is also David. David was the king of Israel. He had everything. He saw somebody's wife. He had to have her. Hey! He goes and sleeps with her. And to cover up what he's done, he kills on top of it. So in that same revelation of Genesis 39 and Genesis 2, I'm getting the revelation of when a person doesn't have self-control over the, the will of, when they don't, people don't obey the word of God, when people don't obey the will of God, it leads them to fall and the falling, it becomes a, a fall that keeps on falling. You, begin, you, you, you go into deep, 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 deep bondage. That same word though, that same revelation from Joseph and, and, and from, and from um, Adam, I'm able also to get a word of being cautious when the Lord tells me to do something. Because Nathan went to David and said, David, I have a story to tell you. There was a man who had all these things in his man, yet he went and grabbed an, another man who only had one. And decided to kill it and eat it. David, and then and Nathan said, what do you think should happen to this person? David said, ah, this person needs to be killed. And Nathan said, that's you, David. That is you. You are the king of Israel. You could have had all the beautiful women. Married a hundred times if you want. But that wasn't enough. The one person you couldn't touch. You went and touched. And you have killed Uriah, and because of that, you are going to suffer. David's throne and his kingdom began to deteriorate by that one action he did. The Lord turned his son Absalom against him. David was never the same again after that incident. So when I read that, and the Lord reveal all these things to me, it cautions me in my decision making. It cautions me in my ways. It cautions me in my behaviors. Wow, I need to be careful. When the Lord tells me to stay away from something, I must stay away from it. That is what the word of God is able to do. It builds you. It directs you. It directs you. It directs you. You make right decisions. Huh? You make right decisions. What does David say? He says, the person who delights in the word of God. Psalm 1-2. A person who meditates on the word of God day and night. They are like a tree planted by the streams of water. Which yields fruit in its season. He says his leaves never wither. His leaves never wither. And everything they do, they prosper. Why? And they have peace. Because the word of God is directing them. The man I'm married to, he doesn't beat me. He doesn't force me to cook. He doesn't, no. 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 I can't begin to tell you the type of marriage I have. Some of you may think I'm boasting, but I'm not. I'm not. And if I was left to myself to pick such a man, no way. If I was left to my carnal mind, I would have never picked my husband. 
Right now, I will be having swollen lips like some of you. Right now, the man will probably be slapping me sideways. Right now, he'll probably be outside somewhere, been gone all day, left me with the kids. I don't even know where he's at. I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. If I was left to my carnal mind to pick him and not be influenced by the word of God, we'll probably be divorced by now. I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. So when David tells you in Psalms chap chapter 1, verse 2 to, to, to 3, that whoever studies the word of God Huh? They are like the streets planted in the water and their fruits bear season and whatever they do, they prosper. It's true. I am a living testimony of it. I'm a living testimony of it. It is the word of God that has given me the security I need to even come on Facebook to preach to you without makeup. Some of you, it may not be a problem, but me to me, it was a problem for, for a long time ago. For, for a long time, it was a problem. It was. But that is the word of God. It, it, it builds you. It builds your life according to the will of God for your life. And so you don't go through life stressed. You don't go through life always bouncing back. Ah, oh, my goodness. And some of you, you think God, the Lord is letting you go through this. So no, no, it's your bad decision. This has nothing to do with the Lord. It's your bad decision making. Eh, the Lord is letting me suffer so to teach me a lesson. No. The Lord is not letting you suffer so to teach you a bad lesson. No. If you're over there and you're using that as a chalk, as an excuse, I'm taking it off now. It is as a result of your bad decision. Go and evaluate your life. That thing that has brought torment and, 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 and pain in your life and depression in your life, Go back to the source of it. Did you consult God? Did you? Hey, the Lord is trying to strengthen you. Who told you? He said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Hmm. So study the word. Study the word. Make a time to study the word. You only benefit... You only benefit by studying the word. Some of you, you need the word to raise your kids. You need the word to be a good wife. You need the word to be a good lawyer. You need the word to raise your children. You need the word to do everything. And who told you that just because you are studying the word of God, you are, you are, you, 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 the, the living right is, is boring. Some of you, you think that you only have fun when you're in the world. In the world, let me tell you something. Me, I can honest because I've been set free. I was never happy when I was in the world. I never had fun, though I was there dancing, laughing, drinking, act, acting like I was happy. I was lying. I was never happy. Never. I came home depressed. I woke up in the morning depressed. Like a drunken cat. Just wanted to stay in my bed. Depressed. Because I spent the whole time hanging out with people who don't really like me. I was depressed. Please. So let nobody tell you that if you live a faithful life, if you live a God-fearing life that, 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 that is boring, that you're boring. Who told you? Ask yourself. That parties you're going to every Saturday. And because of that, you go to church late. And because of you that, you don't want to take God serious because you don't want to be boring. Are you happy? Ask yourself. Be honest with yourself. We are in 2018. Don't carry the same demons from 2017 into 2019. Ask yourself, are you happy? No, you're not. You're not. If you say you are, you're lying to yourself. And may God help you and have mercy on you. You're not. Fornication and all that boyfriend that you're doing, letting everybody know that you have the perfect boyfriend and everything is going. Are you happy? You're not happy, my sister. You're not happy. There's something still missing. So leave that life and come and find true fulfillment where you can be content, where you can be joyful. 
than other pretense. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? Some of you, I look at your stuff and I'm just tired for you. I'm tired for you. My God. You, you, you behave as if nobody can see through it. But we can all see how hard you are trying to show everybody that you're happy. Meanwhile, you have no ounce of happiness in you. Your smile, it can show. Does anybody need to tell us that uh, 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 Trump's wife is not happy? No, we can tell by even the way she walks. We all know that she's unhappy. So why do you continue to deceive yourself? Because obviously, you're only deceiving yourself. Why do you continue to deceive yourself? When the word of God, when God is out there looking for you, waiting for you, he says, come to me, my daughter. Come to me, my son. Let go of these things that is going to lead you into death. Come and find life. Don't let anybody tell you that living a righteous, a purified life, a holy, sanctified life is boring. Never that. I have been living that life for now. And I'm the happiest person. I'm the most joyous person. I tell you. I tell you. I have never been happier in my life than I am now. And it's not, it's not in absence of, of problems. So no. It's not in absence of problems. My father called me. He said, uh, Jenny, uh, my, one of my prophets, uh, prophet told me that demons are chasing after you. Because when you pray more, you have more problems. The devil's always fighting you. <laughs> but I overcome him. I'm telling you, living a spiritual life, living a sanctified holy life is the most fun you ever have. Trust me, giving yourself to the Holy Spirit is the most fun you ever have in your life. The things will begin to reveal to you. My goodness. My goodness. Sometimes I sit that in church and the Lord begin to show me things. Can you imagine? Where angels are. I get these impressions. Ah, my God. Let nobody tell you. Let nobody tell you. That living a holy life is boring. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie. Let nobody tell you that going to parties and drinking and fornicating. I'm glad, my brother, if you're done, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Let nobody tell you going to parties and, 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 and hanging out, drinking, fornicating, giving to the things of the world. Let nobody tell you that it, it, it's much more better than living right for God. And if you decide to do that, you see what God begins to do with your life. The other thing that I want to tell you is also read Proverbs. Even if you started reading the Gospels, like I said earlier, 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, read after that, after you're reading, read the uh, Proverbs. Because I, Proverbs, me, I say is a chapter of Proverbs a day keeps the foolishness away. Everybody should read Proverbs a day. Proverbs has 31 chapters. One for each day in a month. Read Proverbs. Whatever chapter you read in John, if you're reading John 1, when you start by reading John 1, you spend that 20 minutes reading, then you go through John, uh, one, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 1. As for Proverbs, when you read it, it will just stick to you. And you begin to do that for one month. Just try it for one month. This thing that I'm, I'm telling you, try for one month. And if your life doesn't change, come and I will stop doing Facebook Live. I will stop. Because I know it will transform you. You even yourself will be coming to do Facebook Live to teach others. And the joy and the peace you have, joy in the Holy Ghost. Hmm? Anyway, I'm done. I hope you are blessed. I hope it blessed you. I hope it blessed you. I know it's blessed me to share this with you. It's a joy. It's a joy that I have. And I want you to have that joy. It's a joy that I have. And I want to share it with you. I want to share it with you. And I hope. 
that some of you, you will take upon this to even really practice it and you see what the Lord will do with your life. Amen. 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 I'm glad you're blessed. You can also share. You can also share so that others can watch. Most of the times that I get um, feedback from others, some people that will write me like I'm crying. I don't know. Oh my God. Can you please do this? Most of the time, it's people that have shared and they watched it from other people's um, Facebook wall. It had most impact in their life. Yeah. Yeah. So please share. And in that way, when you do that, the Lord will reward you for being a blessing to somebody's life. Because some of your friends on Facebook, you, can, you will never talk to them. You never will have a way of impacting them. But some of these things, when you share, that's why mostly when I'm, somebody's doing something that's very powerful and I feel like it'll be a blessing, I share right away. I share right away so that my friends can also partake. So be a natural friend. Be an actual friend to your friends on Facebook and share this because you know this thing that I'm saying is true. And it will be of a blessing to you. Amen. I don't, it's not to me that I gain popularity. No, please, please understand. It means nothing to me. I'm so content within myself. If you've if listened to everything I've said, I have most fun in my life right now when I'm in my closet. Most fun in my life now when I'm in my closet. So, I don't do this for popularity. I beg you, please. I don't come on. Never that. Never that. I'm, I don't have the previous of face to come here to, to do that. Nor do I have the previous of voice to, to come here. I come here basically to just share the word of God with others. Just like the, the woman, the Samaritan woman who found Christ. And she went into the 10 cities preaching to the others. That is all I'm doing. I feel it bubbling inside me to just share. So you're not doing me a favor by sharing. Never that. I'm so content within myself. You have no idea. The, the, the Lord fulfills me. The Lord fulfills me. The Lord fulfills me. And that is that fulfillment I want you to have. I am so content. I have joy. Absolute, pure, unadulterated joy that no one can take away. Not the dramas of life. And I don't see this saying I don't have problems. I have issues. I have problems. But I have joy because I know God is with me. Hallelujah. Don't you want this? This sense of fulfillment? And I pray that it's your portion. I want to say a quick prayer. Then I, if there's anybody on here who needs the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Some of you, you need to repent all over again. Say the salvation prayer. You've listened to this word. You know that you just need to say the salvation prayer all over again. The Lord is telling me, just lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. I know, I believe that you came to die. And on the third day, you rose again. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Come and refresh me. I'm the prodigal son, prodigal daughter. I, I have gone my ways. I've left you and I've gone in my ways. I've come back, Lord. Accept me. Accept me, Lord. Come into my heart and reign over me, Lord. I give myself to you, Lord. If you've said this prayer, my brother, my sister, you are back into the fold. I thank God for your life. And for those, those of you who has been impacted by this word, I pray in the name of Jesus that this word will bear seed and bear fruit, that this word will awaken a desire in you to want to serve God, to want to grow closer to God, to want to know God even more. Hallelujah. And if you do that, your life will never be the same. It will be better. Your life will be better. You will also become a testimony and you will also inspire others. God bless you guys so much for staying with me for almost two hours. God bless you. May the, face, may the face of God shine upon you. May the countenance of God shine upon you and give you peace. May the blessings of the living God follow you. I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you, I condemn it. I pray that you have good sleep. I pray that the Lord will reveal himself to you in your dreams. 
and even now before you sleep if you can even spend time to even just read the word before you go to sleep it will be something it will be it will be a step but i hope these steps have helped you god bless you all so much god bless you all so much those that came on you can please go back and share and, and look at it and watch it again lord okay God bless you all so much. Until I meet with you again next time, may the peace of God be with you. None of you will die. I come against the spirit of death. I come against the spirit of death. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You will live to declare the works of the living God. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I love you all, but God loves you more. Jesus Christ loves you more. Why? Because he was the one who came to die for you. So get to know him. Shalom.